discussing about an important term that's frequently used in electrical engineering, that's the term power factor. That is the great significance from industry point of view regarding the calculation of electricity bills. Actually, the concept of power factor comes into the play when we deal with AC circuits and having reactive loads. For example, in, this, in an industry, we are having inductive induction motors. Right? Uh, at that time, power factor plays a very crucial role. Actually, power factor represents the ease with which the power flows in your AC circuit. Or in other words, or in other words, we can say the power factor is used to measure how efficiently an electrical equipment utilizes the amount of power supplied to it. The higher the power factor, better is the efficiency of the equipment and the vice versa. Love of the power factor means that, that the performance of the equipment is not less and hence power losses are less. And it's, uh, if we talk of its range, it lies between, its value lies between 0 to 1. Practically, when we see it in the circuits, it's, it's manipulated by taking the cosine of the angle between the voltage and the current. So, today we are going to demonstrate the same thing, uh, how we can uh, check the power factor of a given load and how we can uh, practically see the phase angle and hence to calculate the power factor of the given load. We will be uh, today analyzing the same thing using this uh, best uh, instrument which we are having in the lab, that's the power quality analyzer. Now it has many features and we will be using one of the future to calculate the power factor and analyzing the phasor for different loads. We will be using individually this resistive load which are, we are having. You can see, we will uh, first individually connect this resistive load and see the power factor, whether that is uh, unity and the same will be analyzed on the uh, power port analyzer. Then after that we will remove, we will connect this that two load, right. Then after that we will connect this capacitive load. And connecting all the three loads individually and seeing the resulted phasors of voltage and current and their time domain uh, representations on this instrument that's this power quality analyzer. So let's start. We'll switch on the power supply from this side. Then after that we will first cap this auto transform to zero load. That means no voltage will be appearing. Now you can see from the auto transformer the two wires are coming. That's the fade and neutral. So this, uh, with this power supply we are going to energize for this resistive load, right? So the neutral will go to the neutral and in this phase you can see we are having this current probe. This is the current probe, you can see. This current probe is connected in phase and it will display the amount of current on this uh, system. After that we will be using two voltage probes. You can see we are having these two voltage probes, right? And we will be connecting one at the phase and another at the neutral, right? So, in this point is shorted, we can connect it here. So, let's connect this probe here, right? After that, we will connect this phase. So, this way we have connected the voltage two voltage probes where it will be turning on this power supply from back side and turning on this MCB you can see the voltage which we have fed to this resistor load bank the magnitude of that voltage is reflected at 13 volts right and right now you can see no current is flowing no resistor load current is flowing because all the MCBs are turned on now right now what what I will do I will start increasing the load current I have turned this MCB on you can see the current is 1 amps and see you can see um, as I am uh, I'm going to I'm turning this MCBs on the um, uh, magnitude of current is going on increasing you can see as I have turned all the 4 MCBs on on of this phase you can see the amount of current is 4 amps right uh, also in time domain representation this actually this bigger is the voltage and you can see this smaller one is representing the load current acts the resistive load current you can uh, analyze this thing you can see the voltage and current they are in phase the positive cycle and negative cycle they are in phase there is no phase difference right this also you can see on phase representation you can see the voltage is represented by the figure phaser and the current is represented by the small phase they are in phase or so you can see you can see from this representation i now now see i am decreasing you can see the amount of current is reducing and the phaser current phaser is going on 
trying to become smaller. As you have seen that the voltage and current they are in phase. So for this load bank, the power factor is unity, right? Because cos zero is one. So let's now demonstrate the same procedure for inductive load bank to a So what we will do? We will switch on this power supply. Now we will connect the same wires for this inductive to inductive load. You can see. See, right now no current is reflected by this uh, meter. You can see the waveform of voltage. That's 215 volts. Now what I will do, I will turn on this MCB. That means now inductive current is flowing in our circuit. Now the magnitude of current at this inductance is 3.3 amps. And you can see, if, we, if, we, if, we, if I'm trying to increase the value of current I will decrease the inductance you can see you can see the waveform of current inductive current and you can see there is a 90 degree phase shift and you can see the voltage in the current waveform there is a 90 degree phase shift exactly the current is lagging the voltage by an angle of 90 degree and also on the phaser you can see this is the voltage axis both voltage phaser and this is the current phaser and the current you can see is actually lagging the supply voltage by an angle of 90 degree since the core of uh, phi here is 90 degree for inductive load the cos phi is zero that means the whole of the power will be raised and you can see as I am reducing the current you can see the current phase will try to become smaller right and the same procedure will be nine right now repeated for this capacitive load line. now let's start the same procedure for this pure capacitive load line. so we will connect this single power supply to this right so switch on the power supply and right now you can see right now this capacitive current is zero now you can see the waveform of this voltage once again magnitude is 18 volts only voltage waveform is visible because right now the magnitude of current is zero now what i will see i will turn on this mcb to introduce the capacitive load in the circuit and i will increase the capacitor you can see the current is increasing you can see you can see the current is increasing magnitude is 7.4 amps and right now you can see uh, the current waveform is actually distorted because of the capacitance right so to actually realize we will kept you can see in this on score form in the phase representation it's reflected completely show, shown by the phase representation if this this is the voltage waveform and this is the current waveform that means current is actually leading exactly by an angle of 90 degree as shown by this phi is 90 degree and the cosine of this phi is cos phi 90 will be zero so for pure inductive and capacitive load the power factor is zero and for pure resistive load man, the power factor is unity now if there is a combination rl rlc rl, obviously the power factor will lie in between zero and the same will be demonstrated in the upcoming video thanks